Demetrius, right in front of you. Congratulations, my friend. Um, first of all, what does the record mean? You know, the five years of defending your title and, and being the champion. Can you put into words what it means to beat Anderson Silva of all people? Yeah, uh, 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 yeah it's awesome. You know, um, when I first got the belt back in 2012 and then defended it in 2013 against John Dotson and then one after another after another after another. You know, going through the injury, staying healthy, always trying to get better at the gym, taking on new challenges, the rematches, you know, to see who's evolved, fighting Greg Jackson's camp three times now. Um, it, it, it's awesome. It's an awesome feeling. Um, thank you to my coaches and my teammates back at home. This was, you know, a 12-week camp. <clears throat> and to be able to come back out here, repeat again, have no injuries, it, it just feels really good to be able to not hear um, Anderson Silva's name next to mine anymore. Now my name is like, they're like, oh, who has the longest reigning, you know, title defenses? Demetrius Johnson does. When did it first become a possibility to you when you started looking at it? Like, after what fight did you start thinking, hey, Anderson's in my sights? It, it, it's, well, obviously 10, but it, it, it's hard to, you know, when you get through your first title defense, you know, Anderson Silva is still champion. He's still beating people, beating people. And we always took one fight at a time, you know. One title defense at a time. Um, but like I said, when we got to the 10th one, it's like, oh, man, we're, we're right here. We're walking on uncharted territories. Um, we're tied with Anderson Silva, so we're going to go back home, reset, refocus, and always uh, evolve as a, as a champion and as an athlete. And uh, we made it happen. You always uh, do something different. You add things to your game. And, but tonight was just a mind-blowing that move that you made. Uh, <laughs> I heard you say that you had worked on that uh, in the gym. W w was there something specifically that you saw that led you to think that was something to work on? Or was it just a move you wanted to have in your arsenal? Well, let um, me hit on two things. So it's funny. I never, you know, you see a lot of people out there, they're doing their training videos, their vlogs and stuff. I train, I don't, you know, show any of my training. I just don't do it. It's none of your guys' business what I'm doing in the gym. Um, but we do have the embedded crew coming out there, and I'll let them film my warm-up. And they're like, dude, you need to let us you know, film your, your sparring because the stuff that you're doing in sparring, you're actually doing in an octagon. And Rick Lee, he will tell you already in Edmonton, I, I threw, you know, I was practicing throwing people up. I do it all the time in the gym. Um, so it when I was in the octagon fighting Ray Borg, he's very tough, very tough dude. His game is scrambling. That's what he likes to do. And when he was like, oh, I'm out scrambling DJ, I'm gonna get on top of him. And even when he took me down, I was like, okay, you took me down. Are you gonna pass guard? No. And I elevated him and I got back up and I was like, okay, you took me down. That was, that was the best opportunity you had. Um, and then when I had his back, he was very planted. His weight was planted. And Matt, a couple, of day, uh, a couple of weeks ago, he was saying, when somebody's planted, you have to shift their weight. Shift their weight. And when they shift their weight, they're light. So when I had him, I was kneeing him. I was going to try to kick him in the face, but I knew he was looking for that to try to take me down. So I kneed him. And then I shook his weight. I shifted his weight. And then when he shifted, he went back through an elbow. And I was like, got you. And that's when I threw him up and then land an arm bar. Yeah. Fuck yeah. Mighty Mouse right here. Hey, congratulations, champ. Thank you. That was incredible to witness. But you, you lied to me at media day. You said you like to play Street Fighter because you can't do those moves in real life. And clearly you were bluffing. What are we gonna call that? I don't know, Mighty Arm Bar? I don't know. I was gonna say the Mighty Bar, but John Morgan has a good one back there. I'll let him, I don't wanna steal his thunder. I'll let him <laughs> say it. Um, your pace seemed to increase as the fight went on. At what point did you realize that you were running away with this? Because, uh, you know, once your pace increased, you were basically putting on a clinic. Yeah, um, there was a long time ago in, I think it was Pride. Crow Copy was his birthday, and he was in the uh, World Grand Prix Championship. And, there, and he had that look on his face that nobody was going to take that championship away from him. That's kind of how I felt today. Like, I felt like nobody was going to take this away from me. The weight cut went easy. All my training sessions went easy. Um, I, I ate as much as I kind of wanted this week. So everything just felt good. And when, it get in, when I got in there, there was something like when I fight guys who are my size, who are 5'3", five, 5'5", five, five, it's, it's easy to, to, to just fight, I guess you can say. Um, but you never know that you're going to win the fight until, you know, the referee pulls you off. Um, I got a lot of footage of you during the open workouts. You know, I um, witnessed it firsthand. And then, of course, tonight we saw what you did in there. I just can't wrap my head around some of the things that you do. Can, can you just drop a little bit of wisdom on those angles? Your angles are just, unlike 
anything anyone else does. It's so far ahead of the game. Yeah, you know, obviously I'm not in a sport of, you know, taking concussions and, and taking blows, you know. That Vienna and Bobby Green fight, amazing fight, but when I'm sitting back there, everybody's like, oh, that's a tough fight, it's a tough fight. And I'm like, man, I'm really worried about the concussions, they're, they're receiving right now. They're just taking concussions and concussions. And I learned my lesson a long time ago when I stood and banged with somebody, and Matt goes, you're such an idiot. He goes, that's not your skill set. Your skill set is to be able to move fluidly through the aspect of mixed martial arts. So when I'm in there and I see Ray Borts walking forward, I'm like, okay, he's plotting that front foot. I'm an inside nine. I'm going to pop the jab. Okay, I'm going to move. I'm going to switch the south. I'm going to throw the body kick. And then he wants to catch my kick, so I'll throw it, and he'll catch it. And I make sure I just keep it heavy on his head. So I look at my opponent and see what they're good at, and then I try to take it away from them, and then I look for the submission or the finish. And a caveat to that would be, you know, as the game evolves, a lot of people are moving away from doing a lot of hard sparring. So when you adopted that philosophy that you just spoke of, did you also uh, move away from really intense sparring as well? No, no, I, I, I still, you know, spar pretty intense. You know, I wear 16 ounce gloves and then my MMA gloves are about seven ounces at big poofy ones. And at, at AMC, we're really good about not lighting people up on the face. You know, I, I'm a type of athlete that I don't need to go extremely hard and be like, hit me hard, hit me hard, or I need to hit you hard to make sure I'm fight ready in the octagon. Um, but leg kicks, body, body shots are 100% at AMC, but head shots, nobody know. Go ahead, Ariel. Go ahead. Congratulations. Yes, I'll come on your show Monday. Oh, thank you. Okay, I'll give the mic away. Uh, no, <laughs> I, I just wanted to ask about the finish. Um, do you feel, as amazing as it was, one of the greatest subs ever, do you feel that if you weren't so close to the cage that you would have subbed him sooner, that the cage almost impeded your fall and allowed him to hang around just a little longer? Maybe. I mean, right now my left butt cheek is just shot, literally shot. And I was squeezing. And I remember when I threw him up, I, you know, I grunted, threw him up, and slammed him. And I remember like shimmying, shimmy down a little bit, and then squeezing. And he was doing a good job of moving his, moving his arm back and forth. And I was trying to get the elbow in place. And then like I squeezed, and he kept on going. I was like, oh my god, like he's not gonna give up. And then I had to resituate the, the arm, the elbow again on the right spot. I kept on squeezing and squeezing and squeezing. And then finally, I got the right, the right spot. And I was like, okay, I got it. And then that's when he gave up. Did it bother you at all that you were the co-main event? Oh, no, I'm not, no. No? Like I said, you know, I had my opportunity to Edmonton to headline that card. Um, unfortunately, Ray Borg fell sick. You know, I, I'm grateful that the UFC were able to reschedule me so quick. I love fighting in Las Vegas. The time zone, the food here is amazing. The wake up was good. And I actually, you know, when I was up in Edmonton, I had an injury that I was gonna fight through. And Matt was like, uh, you know what, like you need to get that looked at. And I was like, okay, well we're gonna, we're gonna fight and after this fight I'll get it looked at. Then when it got pushed back for another four weeks, I was like, great, now I have to go back into training camp and to injured and try to not re like make it worse. And so it worked out perfect. I felt better this week than I did when I was in Edmonton. What was the injury? I don't know yet, I had to get an MRI. It's weird, like I can move fine, but when I sit back on my knees, like if I try to, you know, lay down on my knees or be on my knees and try to take my butt to my heels, just excruciating pain in my right knee. I don't know what it is, I'm gonna get it looked at. I was gonna ask Fabrizio Verdun what he thought of the submission. What do you think of his submission considering how good you are on the ground? I think it's very nice submission, but <laughs> <laughs> I think 50-50, you know, the performance in the night. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, absolutely. You know, <laughs> congrats, Tell man, congrats, man. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, 100, 100, yeah, 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 yeah. Any other questions? Tell us about five week. Uh, we saw you driving around with Bentley, Royce Royce, and then Slingshot, and what can we expect as of moving forward? Is it gonna be private jets and flash. And I, I don't make that much money. Let's, let's, let's be honest there, okay? Um, no, man, that was just something that, you know, first round management uh, did for me. You know, the, the bent, not, was it a Bentley? Yeah, the Bentley was fun. And it's nice, man. Sometimes, you know, when you try to go to the open workouts, you do, do this, you're always on somebody else's time frame. I heard Tony Ferguson was 30 minutes late to the bus. And I was like, dude, I'm not gonna wait 30 minutes for you, dude. So I'm glad that I have my own car service to get me to the open workouts. And then the, the slingshot was fun, the Mighty Mobile was something fun to experience. I've always wanted the motorcycle, um, but I've just been too scared to get on it, you know. I feel more comfortable on three wheels instead of two. 
Any other questions? God bless your souls. <laughs>